Hey, hey, everybody. This is Founder Leroon. Um, getting set up right now with uh, Fantasy Grounds Unity. Um, right now, I'm in the update process. Uh, this is something that you will see quite often during the beta period. A couple things I want to go over before I get started. Let's make sure that uh, you understand that this is the beta release. This is by no means a finished product. So if you've purchased the beta copy of Fantasy Grounds Unity, you are at the mercy of changes, updates. Uh, there'll be some features uh, moved around or depreciated. Um, let's make sure you understand that first. Um, I see a lot of people moving their campaigns over, and I also see some complaint about some of the performance issues. And that is to be expected during this beta test. Um, if you do move your campaign over, remember that there's subject to a lot of changes in the next few months. So even if they release the final version, there's still going to be updates and changes. So I would recommend that you might port over your current existing campaign just to check things out. I don't know if I'd absolutely run everything unless that's what you plan on doing. That's fine if you do, but I'm just kind of letting you know, heads up, that... Uh, you know, if you have a lot of issues that, uh, you know, please report those on the Fantasy Grounds forums. There is a spot for that. If you notice a, a glitch or if you get a log or some sort of error code, um, copy and paste that or take a, a screenshot of it and put that up in the Fantasy Grounds forums under the Unity beta test area. Uh, that helps the developers. It helps all of us. And it also ensures that uh, we get these problems fixed sooner. Um, so they released this uh, edition of Fantasy Grounds a little bit early. It wasn't initially going to be released for another week. I think enough people bothered uh, Doug and Smiteworks to have it put out. So he made a risky decision to get it out there. But in the same token, I think it was a good decision because it allows for us to report errors and bugs, and I think um, in doing so, that is going to help the community in the long run. So if you're frustrated about the performance, it's really not much I can do about that other than wait. And I'm talking about waiting for Unity to be updated. So every day, just about, I've been seeing updates on Fantasy Grounds uh, for the updater. So they are tweaking things as they go. And they're taking our information and plugging that in and getting the performance of it up. So it's a, come it's come a long ways uh, since the alpha test. So if you're interested in uh, the alpha test, uh, that was a, a really tough, rough copy at the time. But if you're interested in just this initial beta here, um, just remember that this is a test period. This is not... Here we go. It's time to time to play necessarily. It is here we go. Let's check it out and see what if we can break it or let's see if we can run similarly as we did on classic. Now there are some features that are depreciated, but uh I can go with through that um as we get going. So the first thing uh you'll notice is in the launch screen you will have a Basically, like a uh, similar to classic, and if you come up to the top, very top left, you'll notice a data folder, and then there's also a log. So if you click on the data folder, it's just like the uh, classic, except for the classic had it up near the top right. This is actually on the top left, and then there's some bars up here, some horizontal bars, and that happens to be a log. So if you have connection issues or any problems, you can actually copy and paste that, which is really handy. Uh, the other thing is there's some release notes here. I don't think that's current yet, but it will be. Uh, you want to check for updates at least every other day during the beta period. Um, also, in your settings, when you go into your settings, you want to make sure that you put in your account data and you um, that you have your credentials correct. Uh, a lot of people were having trouble with uh, with uh, updating, and a lot of it had to do with putting in their account with extra characters that they can't see, like uh, blank spaces. 
Uh, I had that issue myself. Um, so when you want to host a campaign, you come to the host screen. So if you're the DM or the person that owns the uh, license and has the content, you can come in here and you can uh, basically set up a new game. So in this case, if you want it to be public and you want it to go on to the, the lobby, then you would pick cloud and public. However, if you want to go private and you're going to use port 1802, um, you can also do the uh, direct connection like we used to. So it all depends on how you, how you want to handle this. But the LAN is for, I believe that's for internal, for your local area network. And then the private would be not listed in the lobby. And then here you have your IP address. And you have all those things too. So anyways, um, I'm going to go to, let's see. Um, I'm going to start a new campaign. And as you can see, you have a whole list of rule sets. So I'm going to pick 5e in this case. That's the one I'm most familiar with. I am going to put down the name. I'm going to call this line of sight tutorial because that's the, the thing that most people are going to get slowed down with. Um, there's a lot of little niggly things, but this is basically the, the most uh, different thing out of the Unity changes, uh, besides the launcher and, and the way you connect. Uh, if you want to put a password up here, you can. Um, I'm just going to set this to private because I don't want anyone connecting. And then um, you could put your GM name in here. Once that's implemented, you'll be able to do that. So it shows up in the lobby as your name. And then you have your extension still. Uh, make sure if you have your old extensions, you do not put those in Fantasy Grounds unless they have been updated and tested. So the only one I'm going to really load is this font. I know that this one was written for Fantasy Grounds. This is uh, written by Matakure. Uh, he is a teacher and also has become a developer. And he works with Rob Tui, and he's also a DM teacher, so he's really good at uh, uh, doing coding now, and he's he's really uh, matured quite a bit. Um, any other extensions on here? There's a new wood theme that I'm going to use. Uh, that is part of the the new build. And if you want any of these decals, you could load those as well. I, I don't really need them. And then there's the lot the the fonts that come with uh, the Forgotten Realms, or you can just use the Wizards of the Coast fonts if you want. I'll go ahead and load those just for the sake of it. So that's pretty much all I have loaded for extensions. So these are official extensions except for the Montserrat. So I'm going to go ahead and hit start. And as it's loading, if you guys have any questions, just let me know. Um, right now, it takes a couple minutes to load up. It's really no different than classic unless you got a ton of content. Um, you're not going to be able to use um, the fantasy grounds in certain ways that you used to, but then in other ways it's the same. I know that's kind of a double double talk there, but uh, there are things that are better improved. There's some things that have been removed. Um, but then there are some access things where if you try to click on a folder, it might take it a minute or so to load. So just be patient with it. Let it load and give it some time, and it will help you um, you know, get through the beta period. It's, it's not going to be long uh, before they start fixing a lot of these bugs. I'm seeing improvements daily, and I'm not just saying that because I, I use it a lot. But, I mean, from alpha to now is a big, huge change. Um, alpha, there was a lot of features that were disabled because they were testing other aspects of it. Right now, I think Smiteworks can start testing their server load. They can look at what people are using. They have better data as to how many people are connecting to each other. Uh, they need your help with the networking. So if you get networking issues with people connecting to your table, they need as much detail as you can give them, such as the type of network the person that was trying to connect to you is using. Uh, what kind of computer, you know, all kinds of technical data. So if you are um, inspired to help uh, Fantasy Grounds troubleshoot uh, during this beta period, it's a 
it's an opportunity to get some problems fixed. So without our help, the, the, those problems will take a lot longer to fix. So, you know, it's not our responsibility as an end user to, to fix anything. But I do think if you're going to use Fantasy Grounds on a continuous basis and you come across something that's, that's really bothering you other than the memory optimization, um, I think that it would be really nice if you brought it up um, in the forums. Um, if you just keep it to yourself, I mean, there's really no one's going to know what's going on with it. And some cases might be unique. So it could be something to do with your computer. Maybe an antivirus software is doing something. It's not letting you write to your hard drive. There's all kinds of issues that can happen. But for the most part, um, Unity seems to be fairly stable. The only thing I've noticed is that some of the menus are a little slower. So right now, this is the classic setup screen. I have the wood panel um, theme here. I kind of like it. I'm going to go ahead and clear the chat by right-clicking and hitting clear. Um, the lighting option is no longer available in this version. That's been depreciated. And the reason why is because they have the new environmental effects. Uh, I didn't think about that, but uh, I was a little upset at first when I found out that they didn't have the lighting. But uh, now that I know why, it, it's not such a big deal. So I'm going to set my table up. So if you click on these here, those will give you direct links to the forums, the wiki guide, the user manual. Uh, if you don't want this to pop back up, you just click on show on load. Just get rid of that. And then next time you come in, it won't. this won't pop up again. So if I'm going to hit next, I'm going to go ahead and load the core rules. And that'll take a few minutes to load, uh, sometimes longer, depending on, on what you pick. But I recommend not opening every single book in your library, even though it's a 64-bit program and it has a little bit more uh, memory access. It still takes it a while to go through your library and, and scour through there and load the, the content. So you kind of have to use common sense. And I've been really pushing it. I've been using really big maps. And it's frustrating because uh, they are too big for the program and it takes a while for it to do anything with them. So you want to be careful with images. Make sure they're not too much bigger than the standard classic. Uh, you can use like a maybe a medium quality uh, definition for the uh, maps. So rather than going high quality, it may be like a medium because uh, classic would handle low resolution pretty well. Um, I think, based on my observations, that you can have maybe a 10 meg file um, and under. And then as far as uh, DPI or, you know, pixels per inch or whatever, maybe like around 100 um, instead of 50. So you're basically doubling that. And you got to remember, you got to push those files to your player. So you don't want to go extremely um, high resolution. Unless you're playing around the table and you're not connecting to anyone online, maybe you're sharing the map on your 65-inch TV or whatever, that would be great for that. But for sharing it online with your players and you're using super high-resolution images and then you're loading up 50,000 books, it's, it's still not going not gonna to make the performance any better. So just try to keep that in mind. Uh, make sure that you um, don't overdo it. So now, as you can see, the library is loaded all the core books for 5th edition, provided that you own them. If you don't own them, you can load the SRD and the basic rules, and that'll give you a rough idea of how it's laid out. It's very limited, but it does kind of give you a view into how it's organized and such. Um, if you want to save your content or build your own content, you can do that based on top of the SRD, but everything you put into it will have to be um, copyright free and you kind of have to know how fantasy grounds works how it's organized in order to do that so i don't want to go too deep into content creation but that is something you keep in mind if you decide to do so in the future uh, as far as modules go i wouldn't load too many um, i am going to load a, a map module so that i can illustrate line of sight so provided you know if you bring in your own maps or if you create your own maps and put it in Fantasy Grounds, you can do that still. Just keep in mind that you don't want the files too huge. But I'm just going to go into the library here. So I'm clicking on modules. 
this is a shortcut to the library and then to modules. And I'm going to load um, a map that was produced by Zovia. And she is one of my favorite digital artists uh, beside Chris of GTW Game Tile Warehouse. So both of those digital artists have really beautiful maps. So I am going to show you line of sight on one of her maps. Her maps are fairly simple, but they're very colorful and they, they really stand out even at a lower resolution. And Chris's maps are incredible too. His, his, the color in his maps and the detail is just phenomenal. But I'm actually going to use Zovia's um, map pack. So I'm going to search for the word map. Now, when you buy stuff, the official modules, you will already have line of sight usually. Uh, maybe in the very beginning in beta, they haven't they haven't put out much of the um, of the uh, line of sight. So you want to make sure that when you get load up a module, um, you'll be able to tell if it has line of sight, and we'll get into that. But uh, on the store, um, on the Fantasy Grounds page where they sell stuff, they'll have a little LOS symbol. So if you buy a module in the store. There'll be a little line of sight emblem underneath it that lets you know that line of sight's been added already. So I'm going to load Zovia's Taverns and Inns pack, number one. Uh, this is the Living Map series. This is available on the Fantasy Ground store. And Zovia is also a good friend with uh, the Digital Dungeon Master. Um, I've had her on a couple of my map, map uh, workshops. Uh, she's always been really good to me, so I I really appreciate her. So that is basically all I'm going to load is the core rules and a map pack. You go to next, you can hit options here and go into your settings. I think for prosperity's sake, I'll just go ahead and show you the the menu here. Right now, I have the ex the extension or the uh, what you call it the the default SmiteWorks decal. But I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. If I want to turn on the dice tower, I can turn it on here. And if you want to see it on your side, not just the players or your clients, you also turn on Show GM Rolls. And I'm going to right-click on this, unlock it, drag it over, and park it next to the four-sided dice. Now this screen here can also be locked, and so I've got it positioned. I'm going to go ahead and lock the position on that. So basically, this is kind of what I would do when I'm setting up. And then I don't really need to mess with too many of these other options because I don't really have, you know, a game in progress. I'm basically going to be focusing on line of sight. So that is that. So you still have the maps and images folder. And if you click on that and you have a lot of content load, uh, loaded, it will take that a, a couple of minutes to load. So just try to keep your, your library not as full. Uh, at least during the beta period, until they get the memory worked out. So I'm going to filter this out to the Taverns and Inns uh, Pack 1. So here are all the different uh, iterations. There's three or four different uh, variations of the Tavern, um, the Cracked Shell Tavern. There's a uh, Grind My Gears pub. There's a Hunting Lodge and the Sleepy Dwarf Inn. So I think I'm going to do the... I'll, I'll take a look at these and see which one I want to work with. But um, yeah, so hopefully this will help you guys when it comes to line of sight and when you guys need to actually use Fantasy Grounds or do your own line of sight. Like I was saying that most of the content that you buy that's from Wizards of the Coast and even some third-party stuff they're starting to do um, it'll already have line of sight built into it. So I don't think they've got to this module yet. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and open up this image, the Sleepy Dwarf Inn. And I just double clicked on it. And this is one of Zovia's first maps. So this is kind of cool. So one word of advice about line of sight is you want it to be not as complex at first until you get really used to the tools. And these aren't too bad for complexity. So this has a level 2 and a level 1. So they're both uh, related. 
So this first one is more or less a daytime view uh, on the downstairs, and then there's an upstairs, and there's a staircase that takes you there. So I am going to basically start the line of sight. Um, so what you have to do is once you have this uh, sized where you want it, you can right click on the map, click on view, and you can actually zoom to fit now, which is really nice. Before you had to finagle around. Now when you hit zoom to fit, it actually will fit into that block. Unless it's uh, horizontal, it'll try to fit the best it can. So this is basically a zoomed in, you know, all the way 100% within this frame. So it's pretty nice. Now the way I was taught and told to work on these maps is to do your doors first. So any opening secret doors, uh, you wanna work on those first. So first of all, you need to identify where are these doors. So in this case, there's a door here, and I'm using the up arrow key to navigate. That must be a window. And this is a doorway in between the, this room and this way, this is a doorway. And this is a doorway. So you have windows. And if you want to put line of sight on those, you can. I would probably make it a terrain feature. Or you can make it a door if you want. That's locked. But I don't recommend it unless you, you know, really have to. I think just leaving it as a terrain feature or, you know, you can make it a door if you want. In case your players want to go in and out the windows. Um, also, you have to remember on this upper level, it'd be pretty dangerous to go in and out. But um, so, yes, let's work on the doors first. So the first things first is I want to unlock this uh, map. And see, I've already got it off of off centered. So you can still use this gold cursor to to move the map around or you can hold uh, control and zoom in and out. It's actually better if you just right click, click view, and zoom to fit, and then zoom in as you need. So I'm going to work on this door first down here. And this is actually a, a stone archway, a doorway. So the only actual door is this little segment here. So I need to unlock the map first. So provided this is not a, um official module and it's not copyright, you can unlock these. So if you bring in your own photos or most of these third party um, uh, map packs will, will not have the, the read only tag on it. So that helps uh, when you're trying to um, mess around with line of sight. You'll still be able to do line of sight, but you won't be able to export it and you'll have trouble um, with that process. So. Um, try to use your own maps with line of sight so you can get used to the tool. Now you can open up a map that already has line of sight built into it so you can get an idea of you know how the, how they plotted everything out. So the first thing I'm going to do is you have all these tools on top. You have the grid mode, which this already has a grid. As you can see, it's, it's already lined up. Um, if you need to adjust it, you can still do that. So if I wanted, I think I want to come down just a hair. So you can click this down arrow, and that nudged it down, centered it a little bit more. And then if you want this to come over a hair, which I'm going to, now it is a lot more centered. So that was just a very minor adjustment, which is really nice. You can actually turn colors now with the lines. So it doesn't have to be this gray color or white. You can actually come in here, change the grid type, but also the color of the lines. So if you want something themed more for your particular campaign, you can actually change the line color. So kind of like that. So maybe like a brownish color. Yeah, it kind of blends in more with the motif. So you can change the line color. That's a new feature I really like. So that's something that... Uh, that was not uh, possible. So the next thing is I'm going to also add some, um, you know, for the doorways and such. 
So you kind of have to go through and kind of look at the map. And you're going to decide, you know, where the shade's going to be. This one already kind of has shade coming from the outside during the day. So not much you can do about that. But as far as the actual map itself, you can uh, determine how in-depth or how detailed you want to get. I'm going to do kind of a basic thing. I don't want to get too deep into it, but I'm going to show you the majority of the tools that I, I know how to use. So again, if you want to change the view and recenter it, you right-click on the map, click View, and Zoom to Fit. And, and it will fit into the, the space that you have for it. So the next thing is the doors. So you have to go into line of sight mode. So it's this brick wall. And then you have a pointer up here. You have a line tool. You have a rectangle tool, which you can use for squares and rectangles. And then you have an ellipse, which is a circle. So I'm going to start with the doors first. And I'm going to do the doors for both maps. So this one is here. So I'm going to zoom in on it. And I'm going to click door. And then I'm just going to pick the rectangle tool, because that's basically what you're going to be drawing. Now, technically, you should probably trace the outline of the door. But I usually make the door just a little wider, because when you actually zoom out, it's very thin. So I try to make it a little bit thicker. So I'm going to actually go all the way out to the hinge of the door. So I'm going to go ahead and click here and draw this out. So there's the first door. Now this is a process. This will take time. There's no shortcut. So you have to get used to these tools in order to be, to use them for your custom content. Now most of the, uh, the official stuff already has all this, but if you want to do it yourself, you got to practice with this tool. You're not going to get instant satisfaction. So here, um, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. Like I said, I make it a little bit wider than the, the door for the sake of ease when you go to play. And I'll show you why later. So there's the other door. And I'm using the arrow keys to navigate up and down instead of dragging the map around like the old days. And then I'm using the mouse wheel. I'll click somewhere on the map. On the map and I'll roll inward to get the uh, desired zoom. And now I'm going to draw another door. OK. So there's the ground level. Now I'm going to do the ones upstairs in the interior. So the first thing you're going to want to do is do all the doors first. Uh, this is a workflow thing. So if you don't want to keep switching back and forth between different tools, uh, I was told to do one thing and then move on to the next. Otherwise, you're going to be switching back and forth between all these different tools. So you want to try to stick to one graphic type or one um, line type. So there's that door. And then there's one more up here. So again, I'm using the rectangle tool, and I'm actually on the door mode. And all I'm doing is lining out where the doors are. So the next step are the hard lines, or what you would call the red the traceable lines. This one should be fairly easy. The, the This whole place is pretty square. So what you can do is, I'm going to do a little bit of different here for the fireplaces, because so I want to show that feature. So when you are actually putting lines in, if you put lines right to the very edge of these bricks, your players are not going to see the detail of the walls. 
So my suggestion is you're either going to go halfway or at least give it some texture so that they can see the detail of the walls because you're going to lose a lot of this wooden and stone detail work if you put the line of sight right up on this edge. So what I recommend is I'm actually going to use this center line as my guide. So the first thing you need to get used to is when you're switching tools is first I'm going to switch to the wall mode and then I'm going to switch to line mode. And you got to get used to switching between these different modes. You have a pointer mode, which just allows you to select things. You have a line mode where you can draw points. You have your rectangle mode, so you can put a rectangle around this. And you have an ellipse mode for circles. I haven't mastered the circle one yet. It drives me bananas, so I just end up doing it manually. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go back to line mode. And I am in the, the brick wall mode. And I am in line of sight mode. So you have to stay in this mode while you're working with line of sight. So any questions so far? Okay. So again, this is Zovia's map. Um, she's a really good digital artist. But I picked this map because it's fairly simple and it's pretty lined out, so it's not bad. There's some maps out there that are very complex that take a lot of different points. Um, I would say I wouldn't go any more than medium complexity for a custom map if you can help it. That way you're not spending two hours doing this every time you have to do a map. So I'm going to go ahead and click wall and line, and I'm in line of sight mode. So I'm going to click here for my first point. I hit escape to get out of this line mode. So when you want to pick up and move to another section, you hit escape and that lets go of your points. So if you made this line here and you stop and you have to get up and do something else, hit escape. When you're ready to come back, you click on the point that you want to connect to and then you continue your line. I also use the arrow keys to help me navigate straight down when I draw the line. That way you're not all crooked and all over the place. I'm going to continue from here. Now that I've picked up, I hit escape so it doesn't drag the line over to the right or to the left. So again, I'm going to insert the point. Then I hit escape. So I'm going to come back here. And I'm going to make this line. And it will connect to this doorway. I hit escape.
So there's the wall here. And then the center wall, I'm going to join it all the way into here. So I'm going to start at this point. It's roughly at center. There we go. That's for that wall. So you keep repeating this process of getting all the lines in. So on these window shutters, I'm going to kind of do it manually, and I don't know exactly how I want to handle it yet, but uh, I'm probably going to trace some of this contour here. But I don't want to go all the way to the edge because then you're going to lose the detail. So I'll have to think of this. These are stone openings here. so. And then same thing with that fireplace. And there is our obligatory bearskin rug. I can just see some naked, hairy dude, maybe a dwarf laying on this rug, <laughs> waiting for his mistress. He's all sweaty. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Thanks, Sven, for following. So basically, um, now um, I'm going to keep doing all the line work now. So I've already done the doors. And now I've changed the line mode and the wall mode, and I'm in line of sight mode. So those are the three modes that I'm in. So first you pick line of sight, then you pick what kind of line, and then you pick which type. In this case, it's going to be the wall mode. I'm going to start from this point here. Just like that. So I kind of have some of this done. Um, I got to deal with the windows. I'll do that last and the fireplaces. And then once you do all your line work, then you're going to go into your terrain. And if you have any terrain that you need to do, then that would be a thing. So. I'm going to go do, do the line work first. Well, second. I've already done the doors. Got to love that. Just one big line. Again, when I'm done making a line and I want, I want to move, I hit escape, and that ends the line. I'm going to come down here, put this line in. I hit escape. It should be like Bob Ross. And I'm going to put this little line right here. This happy little little red line. This is a little happy little lines. Yep, happy little mistake. <laughs> a 
Why wouldn't you go with a mistress waiting for him? Well, I thought it would be a nice little uh, change-up, because usually it is that way. I thought it would be funnier if it was like a George Costanza um, laying there instead of a nice-looking lady. So someone thinks they're going to go up and have a good time, and it's George Costanza <laughs> waiting for them. <laughs> Sorry to ruin your wet dreams and fantasies, but it's George Costanza waiting on the bearskin rug. He looks like a dwarf and he's sweating. He's got a big hairy chest and hairy back. There you go. All right, so... Zooming in a little bit. Again, you're not you don't need perfection. I mean, you want some symmetry here. You don't want all these scraggly lines all over, but I think if it's too perfect, it kind of loses its uh its charm. You lose some of that analog feel, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So the fireplaces, I'm going to line them out around this periphery here. So I think I'm going to cut in Let me think how do I want to do this? So right about here. I was going to delete that line but I'm not try I'm not going for perfection here. And there is a little bit of a snap to feature. Um, it is just something that helps you keep things lined up. But sometimes you're in between the snap feature. It, it drives you nuts. So my recommendation is don't try to be too perfect because it will drive you absolutely nuts. Okay, so there we go. Got this middle line to do yet. Am I clicking and dragging? Move the mouse, click again. Yeah, so there's two ways you can do it. You can click on a point, drag your mouse down, or you can use you can use the direction arrows if you want to go in a straight line. I think that's a lot smoother than trying to click. Um, if you click several times in a row, you're going to get a bunch of erratic lines. So take a look at where you're going to draw and make sure you have enough screen space so that way you don't accidentally lay a bunch of extra lines down. You can hit Control Z if you want to um, hit Control Z if you want to basically get rid of the uh, uh, last mistake that you made. So Control Z does work. Um, if you want to get rid of just a section, you can single click on a point. And this is something you got to learn too. So let's say you wanted to get rid of this little segment here. You would click on this point, 
and this point, and you have to go into select mode, and you have to go and remove points or delete points. So there's two different modes, and then you would hit the delete button. Or if you want to do a whole series of points, you double click on this point, and it'll trace it all the way through, and it'll get rid of all those points. But I'm going to go back to line mode and finish my fireplaces and such. Now, what I might do here is since there's kind of a railing type thing, I may put a terrain tool here because technically you wouldn't see this until you come down the stairs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place a line and we're going to say it's like a railing potentially. I don't know. But uh, it might be just a wall here. So just to differentiate uh, this area, I'm going to put a terrain tool in here. But I'm not going to do that yet. i still got some line work to do. So you want to stay in one mode if you can help it. That way you're not jumping around and it, it'll confuse you. So stay in one mode. Right now I am in wall mode, I am in line mode, and line of sight. I hit escape. When you want to lift your pencil off the paper, basically, you want to hit escape. Hey, thanks, Vin. So, paper off the pe or pencil off the paper or pen off the paper, hit escape. So, now what you want to do is keep the line work going. So I'm going to come out here, and I'm not trying to cover the whole fireplace because I want them to see some of the detail. So if you put the line right up to the edge, it's they're, they're going to miss a lot of this fine detail on the walls and such. So now I got to think about how I want to deal with these windows. I might make them doors, but it's a little late for that, so I think terrain would be good cuz you can um the light won't shine out the window, but when you get close, you can click on open and then the the actual light will flood out of the window. So I think terrain will be actually a good choice for the windows. Okay, so I got most of this lined out. I am not going to do this one just yet. I will focus more on this, just so it's not taking forever. So now I'm going to go into terrain mode. So ideally, I want to stay in line mode and finish the rest of that before I move on. But I'm going to focus on just this upstairs today. So now I'm going to do a terrain thing. So I'm going to draw some terrain here. And I'm only going to draw it from about this third step down. Uh, you'll, you know, because if you're walking around here, you'll be able to see these top stairs. So I'm going to go ahead and line this out. So I'm going to turn to this Christmas tree looking terrain tool. And I'm going to go to rectangle. So I'm going to actually come down about here. And that's going to rep... Ooh, what happened? Oh, that's right. This is going to represent the space that you normally can't see unless you come to the staircase. 
and look down. So that's why I put that there. The other thing you need to decide is how tall are these objects. So if you want to put terrain tools on the barrels, you can. You can put um, terrain stuff on the desks and the tables if you want. Um, this would represent somewhere where people can hide. So I'll do the table here. So this I'm left clicking and dragging because I'm in rectangle mode. So I'm stretching out the rectangle. So it's not perfect, but I want shadows to be cast when you walk in. You want a shadow to be cast in case someone's ducking behind the table. Same thing with the bed. Four poster bed, what do you know? So I'm not looking for perfection. So that bed's a little bit skewed for natural posture. Maybe someone had a, a rough or a wild night. But nonetheless, I'm just trying to get an idea of where shadow would be cast. Same thing here. Again, I'm not looking for perfection. I'm looking for function over perfection. Is this going to illustrate how I'd want this to look when a player is on the table? If yes, then don't worry about all the little, little teeny things you might miss. Now there's a circle tool that you can use to make these circles. I, for the life of me, don't know how to use it properly. So I just go in and I go to line mode and I just kind of hand trace it. Uh, it, it drives me nuts, so. Already I forgot to switch the mode to, well, no, that's right, it's terrain. I hit escape. Now, if you want to get rid of this little line here, you can go to, see, I have this little over thing here. So what I can do is I can actually delete this line if I want, which I might do. So let me see. If you go to remove point, and then you go to selection mode, I selected that dot. I'm going to hit delete. So it just took the point out. It didn't take the actual um, segment. So let me hit control Z. So now I put that back. Now I'm going to have remove or delete points. There's remove and delete. So I'm in select mode. Going to delete the point. And what it does is it makes this meet up with this.
So now I'm going to hit Control Z. Now I'm going to see what happens if I do remove points. There we go. So you can remove points. Now you have to make sure you go back to your drawing tool and you're not in pointing mode. So you got to get used to going back and forth between all these different modes. And like I said, if you do everything, you know, in an orthodox manner, it won't be so tough on you. So this table might be a little tough to do in rectangle mode. So what I'm going to do is just do it by hand. So I'm still in line mode. When I'm done, I hit escape. Definitely want some terrain on this. This is a cabinet or a bookcase, wardrobe. So I'm going to do this one by hand because I got this nice arc here. So there's the wardrobe. Now here's the beer drinking table. So will you be able to see green objects, but there will be shadows? Yes. So when you get close enough, I'll show you when we go into line of sight uh, mode. Um, yes. But it won't cast shadow behind it. Or it won't cast light behind it. So in effect, you can have someone hiding behind the table. So I would say anything that's like two and a half feet higher or above, potentially you could put terrain on it. That way, if you had a halfling guy hiding back here, he'd be able to hide. If it's a very short thing like this vase, I would not put... Uh, I wouldn't put any terrain on it. Okay, so I'm going to do the table. Really have to have patience for this. If you don't have the time for this, have someone else do it. Don't pull your hair out. You got to practice, though, if you want to get good at it. I'm still not that great. I know enough to get, get by, but... Uh, oh, sit. I forgot some of the line work down here. But, um, yeah, so... Take your time. So I'm going to go back to the rectangle tool. Going back to the line tool.
So again, it's not perfect, but it does a trick. Here's another table or desk. Rectangle mode. All right. So I need to finish my line work. I should have done that ahead of time. But so I'm going to go to line mode and wall mode. And go ahead and put the rest of the lines in. See, I accidentally held the mouse button down. Hit Control Z, it gets rid of it. Again, I lift it up, I hit escape. Okay, so there's the rest of the line work. Now I said I was going to use the windows. I'm going to go back to terrain mode. The reason I'm doing that is so that the light doesn't come out the window. But if you come close and you click on open, it'll be like you open the window and the light will spill out. So I'm going to go ahead and just use the, the uh, what you call it, the terrain tool. I think that'll be nice. And you'll be able to move through terrain, so if you open the window, it'll be easier to do for the DM. So I'm going to go back to rectangle mode. Okay, looks like we're getting close to the payoff here. Okay, so now let's just assume you got everything done. Now what you're going to do is you're going to get out of line of sight mode. So what I'm going to do now is go into play mode. So this is your visual cue, um, you know, what things are going to look like. Right now you have this, uh, that's kind of cool looking, but it's line of sight is not enabled. Now this is enabled. This is line of sight when it's enabled. So you're not going to be able to test it really unless you have a, a character token. So I'm going to go into PC area and I'm going to import a character because I don't have one. So I'm going to go ahead and import character. 
And I made some um, earlier versions. So this is a Unity test. So I'm going to hit plus, And it tells you, you know, what if you have any errors, something happened here. But I don't know if it's a problem yet. So now the, the oh, it was a token. So now the, the player character is available. So now I need to put it on the combat tracker. Before I do that, though, I'm going to put a token on. So this is very similar to how we've been doing it before with Classic. So this hasn't changed much, except for how it's stored. So being that I was an alpha backer, I got this Dwarven token. This is actually my actual token. Lady Shell has one. But will be embedded in the game for a long time. So what we're going to do now is put him on the combat tracker. And now I can test the line of sight features. So I just drag him on the map. When the player picks up the token, they will see the line of sight. So as you can see, you cannot, um, the shadow here will not display until your character gets up close. Then when you hit open, it'll let the light through. So that's a way to deal with shadows. I could do that on the barrels too, but I didn't want to get that that into it. But uh, also doors, you can open and close them. So let's say Dora moves to the doors. Now there's a new movement when you have a Dorig selected. You hit the down arrow, it'll move five feet. You hit the down arrow again, there's ten. So you get the idea that you can move kind of like a chess piece. When you get close to the door, you open it, there's the light spilling through supposedly from his light source. He goes through the doorway. There the bed is casting shadow. That, that, that's casting shadow. This is casting shadow. So is this. Now, when you get close to an object with terrain, you can open it and it allows more light through. When you leave the area, I'd say within 5 feet or 10, then I would close it. So that's how that works. So if he came to sit at the table, I'd probably do that. Or if there's someone sitting over here. It's kind of up to you how you want to do it. But uh, anyhow, that's how that works. Now you can lock doors. So, for instance, if you don't want players coming through this door without doing an unlock or something, you hold the shift key and click on the door. And you're going to get a little lock thing. So when your players are controlling the characters, they will not be able to go through the doorway. Any of the red lines that I put here, they can't go through those. Terrain can be crossed, but it must be opened first. So if he wanted to hop up on that table, then you would open it. And it also changes the lighting. So the reason why... Oops. I gotta go into play mode. So... This door is open, but locked. So let me shift it. Now I need to close it and hit shift again. So you can't see any light coming through. So that's kind of cool. You can you can lock things. 
So if you had a chest, you can put terrain over it, and then I don't think you can lock terrain. Let me check. Yeah, you can't. It's probably just make it a door over the top of the chest. So will they be able to see the green objects? But there will be shadows. Yeah. Exactly. Hey, you got the 2E token. The Rob Flair. Awesome. Thanks for the bits, by the way. All right, so basically that's line of sight. Um, that is a very rudimentary tutorial. Um, there are other functions. I think I will add an asset. So let's say I wanted to add a, a chair on this layer. So you go to layer mode, which is layers, and then you go to your asset library, which is an asset. And then you go to images, not tokens, but images. And I'm going to look for a chair. All right. So, ooh, here's a nice cozy uh, chair. So what I'm going to do is drag this over to the to the layers where the the uh, in is right here, the actual map. So I'm going to drag this over. So now I have this chair, and now I want to move it onto this map, and I'm going to set it up kind of by the fire, so it'd be kind of like a papa's chair. So I need to click on this layer, oops, I guess I was wrong, so I want to delete that. Okay, let me start again. Assets. Images. Chair. Okay, I'm going to drag it to the map first. There we go. So it's right about where you'd want it to be scale-wise, maybe just a touch bigger. So right now it says 1.2 by 1 by 1. And then when you want to move it, You have to make sure you have it selected. Oops. Well, anyways, he can sit by the chair by the fireplace with his bare skin rug. Then when you're done, you just click away. And this is a layer that can't be touched. Now, if I wanted to put terrain on it, I could do that. So if I go to the line of sight, and I'm going to go to the line tool and terrain, and draw this as terrain. I made it a little fancier this time. Fancy. And now if I go to play mode. Bring old Dorigan here. 
it doesn't allow the shadow to, or his lighting, to pass through. But if I hit open, like he's sitting there, I guess you could do that. So that is how you add third-party assets. There's also a stamp mode. So if you go into layers and you have an object that you want to stamp all over the place, you can put it in here and then change the tile mode. And then you can stamp tiles and such. So there's different ways you can lay down assets. So if you wanted to build a dungeon with all tiles, you could do that. So now Dorig is resting. And if you want to rescale the token, you can. So I'm going to go to play mode, click on the token, and rescale it as you have in the past. But you have to be in play mode. Now, if you want to do a drawing and such, you can do that to illustrate things. Uh, I'm going to add one last thing here. And this is an effect. So you cannot put a separate layer and isolate a layer unless you break this whole map up into pieces. So it's really difficult to achieve separate layers with effects. So effects occur on the top layer. The functionality isn't there yet. I already asked. So in other words, I can't put snow outside of this house. It'll rain inside too. So what I'm going to do is click on the effects button and that adds another layer. And then I'm going to click on mist and then go to play mode. What did I do wrong? I did something wrong. Let's see. I mean, there's effects. There's mist. For some reason, it's locked. So I'm going to highlight it, lock it. Okay, now let me go to effects. And I'm going to add mist. Oh, there we go. Back to play mode. So you could say that it's a cloudy day, or maybe the, the, the complex is on fire, who knows. But that is how you add the environmental effects. And that's kind of why they got rid of the, um, what you call it, the uh, depreciated uh, mood lighting. Because I think in the future, you'll be able to add a lot of different things. Right now, you just have mist, rain, snow, and a, a parchment, sepia. So... You know, there there'll probably be more in the future, but that's how you add the terrain effects. It clears effect choice sometimes. The effect there, yeah, I don't know why it does that. Yeah, so you know, it's not perfect. It's going to take some practice and time. This is something you need to be patient with, and to do this on a regular basis is very time consuming. So I would pick your battles. Um, like I said, most of the modules already have a uh, line of sight put in it. So if you are going to do that, you want to make sure that you pick your battles, make sure it's worth it. Or you can just go back to using the, the old method where you mask everything out and unmask it as you go. There's still that mode. Um, just you know, make it worth your bang for your buck. Um, I wouldn't try to go in and, and do everything. Maybe if I had a campaign and I needed this map, I would work on this and that would be about it. I've seen a couple of videos where people have practiced. Yeah, it goes pretty quick once you start understanding you know, the little shortcuts. Because there's shortcut keys that I'm not using. So there's a bunch of cool little shortcuts. Lots of control and shift. And you're able to drag objects and rotate them. All kinds of stuff. So I'm not that efficient yet, but hopefully this gives you an uh, an idea of what you you know kind of what you uh, would initially look for. So right now I kind of have this map zoomed out. So I'm going to right click on the map, click on view, and click zoom to fit. 
That way it's a little bit more close to what I want. And then if I lock the map, you have it like this. And then I'm going to right click, click on view, zoom to fit. And there you go. So this is your final mode. And that's a little big. So I'm going to right click on to get it view zoom to fit. So it just depends on on how you want to do it, but uh this gives you some hope hopefully. And then when Doric moves around Now I didn't test the windows. So here's a window so when he comes up to the window, no light comes through. But if he was going to open the window or, you know, use it as an exit, you can open that up and then the light would go spilling out. So that, that kind of makes sense. You could technically make it a door and lock it. Um, I don't know if how many windows are locked or not, but I, I think it's easier just to do terrain tool. And it's kind of up to you. Same thing with his bed, if you... Say he wants to go to sleep. So open that up. That allows his light source through. And now he's asleep. He's going to go to bed. <laughs> so this is kind of a cool little function here. So right click, zoom to fit, and then zoom in when you want to by using the mouse wheel to, to get closer. You can still use this little navigation bar. This compass down here. So there's uh, Dorigi sleeping. He's uh, taking a nap. Let's do a long rest. So go menu, rest, long rest. So reset all his spells. Pull up his character sheet. Drag this thing down. Go to his actions tab. And he's all ready to go. Combat, action, all his spells and everything are ready to go. Or whatever his abilities are. So I can enable... So he targeted himself. So we don't want that. Uh, I'm going to enable Dwarven Resilience. So that works just like it did in... Uh, this is Rob Tui's coding effect. And then I'm going to enable Fighting Style Defense. Because if he's wearing armor, he gets a plus one to his armor class. So those two would be ongoing. All right, so hopefully that helps. Um, I'm going to call it. And I'm going to go ahead and upload this to YouTube later if you guys want to go back and watch it. Uh, there are other videos out there put out by Smiteworks. Uh, they're a little bit more on the tools end of it. I kind of like the little story of uh costanza uh on the bearskin rug <laughs> and i also like to show some of the other stuff that you can do and, and it, that a lot of it's still the same so the only real difference is the launcher the way you connect and these map tools so th those are the main things um when you're importing your own maps make sure they're not super huge you can get away with higher quality images um, I brought in a map that is 300 by 300 DPI, and it's a large map, and it was like 20 megabytes, I think. So I think if you cut that in half, you go or a third, go to 100, um, you know, megabytes per square inch or or pixels, and then go with uh, you know slightly larger dimension. Uh, if you go any more than 2,000, though, you're going to have to scroll anyway. So there's really no point in having a huge map because you're going to have to scroll all, move the map around anyway. So, But it does give you that option to kind of do that more efficiently. So you can have a bigger map. Just make sure it's not Hurkin. You don't want something that's like 2 gigs or something. That, that's ridiculous. Uh, you, you can have higher, I would say medium resolution 
is probably your best bet if you want a little bit higher resolution. So, you know, be, be reasonable, use common sense, and don't, uh, don't expect the world because this is beta. So anyone watching this, it is March 21st, 2020. It's only been out for a few days. And if you are watching this in the future and you see that things are different or have changed, I wouldn't be surprised because this is the actual beta version and it is not the finished product. So any features you see now may be changed, moved, depreciated, who knows? So just make sure that you um, take your time learning the new uh, tools that you have at your disposal. Uh, make sure you have patience. Make sure you have the time to do it. And try not to make your maps too complex. So whatever you're picking, keep in mind the amount of work that you're going to have to put into it. So I think my next project is I'm going to actually try to uh, do Rob Tui's module, The Unknown Whom. I talked to him a little bit about that last night. I just want to see how it looks. So hopefully um, this helps you guys. Um, I'm going to sign out. I'll talk to you later. Uh, have a good day and hope to see you around the community. If you haven't joined us, we're at fantasygroundscollege.net. Our Discord join code is right on the, the front of our splash page. Join us, and uh, we'll show you how to use Fantasy Grounds, and we'll try to get you into some tutorials, practice games, and also to meet other people that are like-minded. Uh, you'd be amazed at the talent that we have in our community. We have a bunch of people that are really professional, very creative, and very patient. So. Come on over, learn how to play your favorite role-playing games at fantasygroundscollege.com, or excuse me, fantasygroundscollege.net, and we have a Discord server where we talk and meet up, and we also have a um, bunch of rooms and, and different people to help with different rule sets. So it's kind of a, a new person-friendly uh, community, or if you've been away from D&D for a long time, uh, we have a lot of people like that too. So come on over to fantasygroundscollege.net and on the front page you will see a join code for our Discord and we will greet you when you get there. So happy, happy, happy weekend um, and have a good, uh, good night. Bye-bye.